What's up guys? This is Megan Hirsch, Doctor of Physical Therapy with Movement RX. This is Midweek Mobility. I am in Vail, Colorado right now. We've got the Alpine team training in the background. Next week they're going to be having the FIS World Championships here. So since we're in the squat archetype this month, we're going to be talking a lot about skiing because you get that squat stance. But for those of you that aren't a ski bunny and just want to improve your squat, stay tuned because I've got some tips for you guys later. Okay, so I've also got a special guest today, but before we get to that, I'm going to talk a little bit about ACL injury with ski racers and alpine skiers in general. So with the ACL, the most common injury we see, about 80%, comes from equipment malfunction, um, where that ski, that binding, doesn't release when we have a crash or we've got too much torque at the knee and the foot here. So that can either be due to, you know, somebody set their bindings too high because they didn't want to come out in a race, or equipment malfunction. We're not going to get too much into that since that's more the equipment side of things. We're going to talk more about the mechanics and how you can prevent that ACL injury and that shear on the ACL. So when I was growing up as a ski racer, I had this coach that was very adamant about driving forward, staying out of the back seat. So he'd get down on, on a ski pole and teach us to get an angle and drive, 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 drive to the front of that boot. So I was like, whatever, okay, I want to improve my performance, I want to ski faster, I want to win more races. So it actually turns out that it's more of a, more than a performance issue. It's actually more of an injury issue with the back seat. So all that time, we were actually reducing our injury at ACL by coaching us to stay out of that back seat. So what happens with the ACL is your anterior cruciate ligament in your knee. You've got the tibia plateau here. You've got the femur. Okay, so the ACL comes from the anterior of the tibia, comes across to the back of the femur there. So it's, it's decreasing or it's, it's stopping that anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. It's also helping with rotary stability of the knee. Okay, so what I see a lot of is, you know, when you get when you get in the back seat here, what's happening is you're getting posterior to anterior force on the knee there. You're also getting with that tail of the ski going in an opposite direction than your foot. So you've also got a lot of pivoting happen at that knee joint as well. So when the ACL is put on that much tension, you're going to get a tear, you're going to get sheer force. So I see a lot of people that come into the clinic and they're like, tore my ACL, skiing in the backcountry all day, um, hucking myself off cliffs, I was fine all day, and then all of a sudden, at the end of the day, I'm on the bunny hill, and I hear a pop, boom, ACL's gone. So truth is, you actually have been applying a shear force all day long on that ACL. You're in that back seat, now you get to the end of the day, and your muscles aren't firing as much, you're getting more of a force, and boom, that ACL's gone. On the bunny hill, you no longer have a glorified story to tell your buddies. It's done for the season. All right, so important for that knee to stay out of the back seat. Because also what can happen is, you know, you've got that sheer force in the ACL, not just on that day, but your entire season. So what can happen, you might not tear it right on that bunny slope, but you might have that crash going back to the equipment malfunction. You have that crash, the bunny is not release, you've just got a lot of torque on that knee. Um, the less stress you've been placing on that ACL, the stronger it's going to be, the less of a risk you're going to have carrying it when you do have that crash every now and then. So I'm going to bring in a special guest right now. Come on over. Hi, Megan. This is Kenny Reynolds. He taught me how to ski when I was like four years old. Blue Mountain, Pennsylvania, we represent. Um, so Kenny is about almost 76 years old. How long have you been skiing for? Teaching skiing uh, for about uh, 50 years. Awesome, 50 years. Ever had any injuries? None. 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 Okay. Lately? Lately, I've had some uh, discomfort in my uh, inside my left left leg, knee. Alrighty. Right. Good morning, Bill. So Kenny's an experienced Welcome skier. Welcome to the Bill Mountain School. Life, school time, but he doesn't Marcus. do a lot of strength training. Um, so we'll be what we're going to do later is have our ski boots. Is we're going to take you through some exercises on how he can get rid of that knee pain and prevent uh, from further Bill injury of that knee. As well as those of you that aren't skiers, we're going to go through some sliding you can. See you guys in a minute. Alright guys, we're back after an awesome day on the slopes. Kenny here, 76 years old, and he's still tearing it up like a champ. Um, but like I said before, we're going to go through some exercises because um, with what we were going over before of staying out of the back seat, 
Now, skiing is a very open environment. You've got constantly changing terrain, different surfaces, so the chances of being able to stay out of that backseat 100% of the time are very unlikely. So I'm gonna take Kenny through some exercises. One of the biggest things we wanna focus on is hamstring activity. So we wanna get that hamstring engaged because the hamstring helps uh, stabilize the knee joint and it also helps the ACL in keeping that tibia back in line with the femur, okay? So I'm gonna take Kenny through a squat here. Now, when I first started crossfitting, I had a very knee-driven squat because I had skied my whole life, so I was always focused on balls of the feet forward. That's actually different, that's actually different than what we wanna do with a dry land squat. We actually want our weight back through the heels. So go ahead and grab that pole have you put it behind your, her, your head. We're gonna do almost like a good morning with him, okay? I'm gonna have him tighten his belly here. I want you to send your hips back, keeping your knees straight, good. So once you get that tension in the hamstring there, I want you to drive your knees to the outside. Okay, good. Head down, we're gonna go nice and slow. We're gonna hold it, since skiing has a lot of eccentric muscle contraction as well as slow. So we're not doing a lot of volitional movements here. Come on back up. So we want to go really slow. We're not going to do air squats for time. We're going to focus more on that muscle activity. Let's do another one. Very good. Pretty awesome squat there. Come on back up. Okay. So I'm going to have him maybe work at that for, you know, five minutes or so a morning and then do some training on rest day. All right. Last thing we're going to have him do, since we already checked him out, He's a little quad dominant, so we want to work on the hamstring strength some more. He's got some poor single leg balance. Sorry, you're still awesome. Poor sing single leg balance. All right. So, Kenny, I'm going to have you work on some single leg balance. Um, so I want you to squeeze your right glute, and I want you to try and stand on one foot. Good. Okay. Now, go ahead and get your balance. I want you to go ahead and reach out and touch my hand. Good. Come on back. Good. Okay. Now he's gonna lose his balance if he tries to do any more than that. So the way that I would progress him is I would have him stand on one foot, go ahead and reach down, touch the floor, keeping that leg straight. I wanna activate that hamstring again. I would also have no shoes, but we've got a wet floor in here, so we're both wearing some shoes. Another way to progress it would be add weight. So add a kettlebell, dumbbell, whatever. I've got a ski boot right here, so I can go ahead and deadlift my ski boot. Go ahead. Bend over, pick that guy up, all right? We wanna watch the back with that one. So I would have Kenny do that um, in the morning before he skis to warm up and again on rest day. All right, so our take homes, skiers and non-skiers, work on that squat, work on getting on those heels, activating those hamstrings, work on that single leg deadlift, um, and then skiers, stay out of the back seat. One last thing, I wanna give a big thanks to John here. What's the name of your shop? Oh, peace. Alright, Vale Village, if you're ever in town, come visit them. We'll see you guys next time.